Hello everyone. We've got a real hidden gem today, and I don't say that lightly. We've got Muppet Monster Adventure on the PlayStation 1. It's a collectible platformer, very much in the vein of Spyro the Dragon. I'm guessing because this was released in October of 2000, after the PlayStation 2, and still while platformers were in favour, it got overlooked. But I feel it needs bringing into the spotlight to get the recognition it deserves. The beginning is a good place to start, and when you begin the game, you are greeted with the story. This is the weakest part of the game. The gang visit the estate of Professor Honeydew's distant relative following his passing, only for Robin to faint out of fright, while the rest, minus Honeydew, Beaker and Pepe, okay, are turned into monsters, Robin must now collect evil energy to stop it spreading and save the Muppets. This is explained in the beginning in a rather nice cutscene, however, following that, there are no further cutscenes until the end of the game. There's really nothing at stake other than knowing the Muppets and being the good guy. You're given no reason to truly care. Uh, they don't show any of the bosses or enemies causing terror throughout the land. There's no violence or pillaging or end of the world scenario built up between levels to give any sense of urgency. And there aren't even any light-hearted comedic moments that the Muppets are known for. There's certainly no weird hooking up of Monster Kermit and Monstrous Miss Piggy although I might have been the only one hoping to see this. And spoiler alert for the ending, the final boss is merely Honeydew's relative that you've not seen at all throughout the game, who admits that he was working on a machine to make things good, only to turn the dial to evil and turn himself along with everyone else. This is a Plankton style level of stupidity from the Spongebob game. And this is only mentioned very briefly in a line of dialogue at the end, so even Spongebob did this better. Uh, Robin wakes up only to find out it was all a dream. Or was it? Suggested by a haunted painting. Basically, the story has a strong start, no middle and a poor end. Once the cutscene is over, you're faced with the stages, and boy there are so many stages. By which I mean there are 18, and that's a fair few I feel. The stages are grouped together in freeze with a common link between them and a boss fight afterwards. There's no open hub world, instead you choose the stages from a dial which provides stats for the levels and quick access if you need to go back and find something you missed the first time around. Each level is self-contained and can be completed in a single run if you know what you're doing or you want to put the time in to explore. This I like. None of that completing a level only to have to go back later and replay parts of it once you've unlocked a new move or hit a switch somewhere else. You can come back and explore if you like, but it's completely optional and you can quit out of a level at any time from the pause menu while keeping everything you've collected up till that point. As this is Muppet Monster Adventure, all the stages try to remain creepy or spooky, but in the same way that Scooby Doo does. So elements and overall aesthetic are there, but nothing that will make you soil your trousers. Despite going for a horror feel, the game still manages to remain bright and colourful just like the Muppets it's based on. Being a large collection of strange creatures, the Muppets can lend themselves to any situation, and collector fawning can now be counted among them. The Muppets, and the local inhabitants, have all been turned into monsters by evil energy that is spreading across the land, and to prevent this from happening, Robin must collect it in the form of one of the most evil things the devs could think of, star-shaped candy. It'll give your kids cavity and make them hyper. And Robin must contain it all within his backpack. The primary use of these stars is to unlock new stages, but the stars are so easily obtained it won't be a problem. These are like the gems in Spyro or the notes in Banjo-Kazooie. 
Next we have Muppet Tokens. These don't seem to have a plot reason for existing, and are presumably there only for branding. Need a collectible? Make it the mascot's face. Kids need to know Kermit and to buy his merchandise. These are far less frequent on each stage, and are obtained by completing a challenge or doing something of note, like a tricky platforming section or a puzzle. These are used to unlock the bosses. Finally, we have the Muppet Monster Amulets. These Muppet Amulets unlock new moves to progress through the game. Each amulet consists of four pieces, each associated with one of the bosses. All the pieces to an amulet are found within a single stage, and the ability they unlock are never required on previous stages. These only appear within the first three stages however, and after that you have the entire moveset at your disposal. One piece of dialogue later on, however, suggests to me that you are at one stage in time going to unlock the moves when you defeated the corresponding boss, which would have changed the layout of the stages and could have forced you to backtrack to access areas you previously couldn't. Speaking of moves, Robin's moveset is basically the love child of Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. Robin's basic moves are running and jumping, but he's also raided the ABGN for the Power Glove, It's So Bad, which essentially has the same field of attack as Spyro's Flame Breath, though it may not last as long or have the same range. Robin can also spin a la Crash, and just like in Spyro, the different attacks are used on different enemies. Those with metal shields can block the Power Glove, while larger enemies can only be killed by the Power Glove. These are all the base moves you start with, but after you collect the amulets, you get a number of moves which are for the most part are context sensitive. When using the lockable moves however, Robin will transform, which is what makes the game monstrous. All these unlockable moves are based on the Muppets boss transformations, so let's go through them shall we? Gonzo's amulet will allow Robin to turn into a bat and glide whenever he's in the air. It also gives him a thirst for chicken blood. Fozzy Bear's abilities turn you into a werebear and allow you to climb certain poles. This is where it starts to get context sensitive as the abilities can only be used in certain circumstances when they are actually needed. Clifford, the pink catfish, turns the frog into a creature from the deep, allowing you to dive into deep water and attack while submerged. Miss Piggy, the Bride of Frankenstein, allows you to judo chop certain doors and objects to break them. And Kermit is Frankenstein's monster, allowing Robin to push and pull heavy blocks around. Gameplay is the meat of this and the star of the show. Someone once described this to me as the gameplay of Crash Bandicoot with the level design of Spyro, and while the game is certainly more Spyro than Crash, this holds true for the most part, and for the most part it's a fairly linear platformer full of obstacles and enemies to get in the way, with these cute little googly eyed signs pointing you in the right direction. From what I could gather, these signs would always point you towards the end of the stage, so any rooms the signs didn't direct you to were purely for collectible or exploration's sake. I thought this was great, because if I hit a crossroads I knew which way would progress through the level and which way had the collectibles. You can also generally find Pepe in each stage ready to say OK a large number of times and give you a challenge for a Muppet token. These challenges will include races, breaking obstacles, flying through rings and slides. Slides seem to be a staple in these kind of games but some just don't want to utilise them very much, and this is the case here with only two slides. Boo. The game has six bosses, each with a different method for defeating them. Just a shout out to Miss Piggy's slide and lax attitude to being caught, just standing there for Robin to casually stroll up to her and blast her with a power glove. I do like to have a good complain, but unfortunately the Muppets doesn't have much to complain about. We've already mentioned that the story just wanders off after the start, only to make a brief cameo at the end, so we'll leave that. Normally, in these kinds of games, there's a grace period or a margin of error that allows you to miss 
some collectibles, but not the Muppets. To face the final boss, you need a grand total of 106 out of 108 Muppet tokens. The best games allow you to beat them by collecting most of the collectibles while offering a secret incentive to collect everything, and the Muppets tries this, but doesn't seem to understand the point. You need 99% of the tokens to fight the boss, at this point you've basically collected everything anyway. They do offer a secret for getting the remaining 1%, but it doesn't add to the story or the experience, you just see the characters come up on stage and take a bow as if it were a performance. If you weren't so close to having everything, this wouldn't be worth it. Uh, the real reward for collecting every everything is just getting more of the game to play. I feel like the only reason you weren't expected to get 100% to beat the game is because the last few collectibles were a real nightmare to find. And the devs knew this because they had special video clips in the game showing you how to get them in the unlockable gallery. I almost found one of these while exploring naturally, but they intentionally placed a barrier there to prevent you from finding it easily. The game seems to flip flop in difficulty from having you use some more advanced techniques like damage boosting to Chowd's first block puzzle which will net you a token simply for pushing a couple blocks down a path. It just doesn't seem very consistent in my opinion. Now, I mentioned earlier an unlockable gallery. So, the second time you kill an enemy in a stage, it will drop a coin. You can only get one coin per enemy, but they unlock items in the gallery. You get the usual stuff like audio clips and concept art, but you also get what appears to be Muppets fan art. After unlocking them all, totally legitimately of course, <laughs> I found a good number by a fellow named Romic, and I can see why so many were included, and I want to know if they're still producing art. All I can say is Romic, give me a call, I want to see more. Now, The Muppets mostly is mostly gameplay, and while it is a diamond in the rough, it's still a diamond. And the game is incredibly fun and on the longer side of platformers I've played recently. If the newer stuff just isn't doing it, or you're tired of seeing the same platformers over and over again, definitely play Muppets Monster Adventure, you won't be disappointed.